the problem to prolong navigation is of primary importance for national economy. It is a well-known fact that a basic ice-breaking means is icebreakers, but limitations of their ice-breaking capacity and maneuverability, great power consumption, their inability to perform ice-breaking operations in shallow water at the entrance to ports and harbors, bring forth the necessity of searching for new ways of ice-breaking. And here come amphibian air cushion vehicles, with their ability to break ice sheets by the resonance method, that is, by exciting resonance band gravitation waves. The research done has shown that the use of air cushion vehicles as a means of ice breaking enables to solve a few problems connected with prolonging navigation period and overcoming ice complications on water areas. High productivity of the resonance method attracts much attention. An icebreaker makes the channel, which is a little bit more than the breadth of its hull, and its velocity in ice is 10 to 15 km per hour, while an air cushion vehicle moving with a resonance speed of 25 to 35 km per hour can break a nice strip of several tens meters wide by one passage. Thus, when we face the problem of rapid ice breaking over large areas, advantages of air cushion vehicles are obvious. Moreover, amphibian qualities of air cushion vehicles and their high speed enable the vessel to move fast to the region of ice complications and to break ice in shallow water unaccessible for ice breakers due to their displacement. The resonance method of ice breaking has its drawbacks as well. After such ice breaking, there is no navigable channel in ice. That is, cohesion of broken ice is 10. Under low temperature conditions, ice pieces quickly freeze together. That is why the use of the resonance method for convoy vessels will not give positive result. But in case of emergency, when a ship is ice burned, the method may be of great help. As after many passages, ice fragments get rather small and do not hinder the movement of transport vessels. To break up a more thick and strong ice cover, the load certainly should be bigger. Thus, in order to break up the ice sheet 30 cm thick, the mass of the vessel was 20 tons. For ice thickness of 70 to 80 centimeters, the displacement of the vessel was 120 tons. In the second case, the size of ice fragments, the amplitude of waves necessary for ice breaking, and the breadth of the broken ice strip were larger. The free edge of an ice sheet considerably facilitates the process of ice breaking. Moving in clean water, the vessel excites parallel gravitation waves. At the moment when she is riding upon the ice sheet, the waves are transformed into band gravitation ones. As a result, the ice sheet swings more eagerly up to the ultimate amplitude and the process of ice breaking starts immediately after the beginning of the vessel's movement upon the ice cover. That way, even small air cushion vehicles can break up an ice sheet with free edge of the thickness considerably more than that of a solid ice cover. The work of the vessel when there is ice edge is like the work of an ice breaker by dashes. In the course of the research done, the influence of local heterogeneousness upon ice breaking qualities of air cushion vehicles was examined. For that purpose, one or several lanes were prepared by blasting 
a nice sheet and then the vessel made a few passages at different speeds. The experiments provided data on the influence of the size of lanes and cracks upon ice-breaking qualities of their cushion vehicles and enabled to work out recommendations on air cushion vehicle maneuverability near open water areas. The resonance method of ice braking can be accomplished by any vehicle capable of moving along ice sheet at necessary speed and creating sufficient load. There were cases of ice braking by bent gravitation waves due to movement of cars, railway trains, taking off and landing of aircraft. A few words about physical processes while using the resonance method. If a load is moving along an ice sheet, Progressive band gravitation waves appear on the surface of ice water system. When the load velocity is near the minimum phase speed of those waves, the amplitude of oscillations sharply increases and the ice sheet starts breaking up. If the load velocity is higher or lower than the speed of band gravitation wave propagation, ice breaking does not occur, as this phenomenon is quite analog to resonance, the method of ice breaking, when the load is moving at a resonance speed, that is at the speed of wave propagation, was called resonance method. of video recording visually confirms the above. The vessel's velocity greatly exceeds the resonance one and because of that even several passages do not result in ice breaking. The value of resonance speed is strictly determined by ice parameters, water depth and ice conditions. For a solid flat ice cover and the constant depth, the value of resonance speed can be calculated theoretically. But under more complicated ice conditions, that at narrow sections, near shore work, free ice edge, tension compression, snow, ice hammocks, etc., theoretical results need verification and correction. In the experiments, the resonance velocity of the air cushion vehicles was distinguished by such features as considerable increase of the amplitude of ice band oscillations, vessel stream by the stern, appearance along of long cracks, having smooth curvature, or the beginning of continuous ice breaking. The experiments have enabled to work out recommendations for choosing necessary velocity of the air cushion vehicle.
low speed of the air cushion vehicle also does not give desired results. Progressive bank rotation waves do not appear, the form of ice deflection is like static one, and the level of ice stresses is lower than critical. When the air cushion vehicle velocity is approaching the resonance one, then gravitation waves appear in ice. At that speed, the air cushion vehicle movement intensively adds energy to the oscillating system and brings about increase of ice deflection. Water fails to support the ice cover. The balance of which has been ensured by elastic forces appearing in the ice cover. If the mass of the vessel is sufficient, the process of ice breaking starts. In our case, the vessel's displacement is less than necessary and the ice breaking has a local character and starts when the vessel is turning or revolving. The use of air cushion vehicles for ice breaking with the help of the resonance method is expedient because they comprise transport and ice breaking functions and being cross-country vehicles they ensure year-round operation. They have practically no draft and hence can work in the basins of any depth. In shallow water where no other ice breaking vessel can operate Air cushion vehicles are able to prevent ice blocking and destructive floods. The work of air cushion vehicles in the resonance method, which positively affects upper and lower ice layers and ice blocking, can reduce the effect of natural calamities occurring during the periods of complete freezing or floating of ice. High efficiency of the resonance method allows to solve the problem of power drop at hydroelectric stations due to increase of effluent in lower water during freezing. Creation and maintenance of the artificial laying will remove water effluent, diminishing power output and prevent ice blocking during spring ice passage over the dam. The use of air cushion vehicles to this end may prove more efficient than that of ice breakers. The resonance method can prolong navigation period by way of earlier opening of rivers and ponds. In coastal regions, air cushion vehicles can be used for ice breaking at freezing ports, harbors and bays. At ports in shallow water, small maneuverable air cushion vehicles may appear more economic than ice breakers. The former can provide complete removal of ice from water area. For this purpose, the ice cover is being broken over large area and then taken away into open sea by wind. Absence of side pressure in the ice cover during ice breaking by the resonance method enables to use air cushion vehicles for breaking off ice and releasing ice barns, ships without damaging their house. The fact 
that it is difficult to operate an air cushion vehicle at low speed explains the extreme care while doing ice braking over small water areas. Thus, for fear of collision with another vessel, the captain is steering his ship at the evidently low speed, hoping to break ice by the ship mass. But he fails to do so, as bearing capacity of the ice cover considerably exceeds the load his vessel creates at a low speed or being static.